Hey peeps, it's Noira and I'm once again back again with a once in a blue moon Ragnarok mobile content. This is Lunafell, my high priest and she does a base heal of 8612 and crits for 17224 if she's using her golden wings. I'm rather obsessed with seeing big heals so let me show you my build and what I know on how to get out that big fat heal. Let's start with the basics. Straight out, magic attack doesn't matter, percentage increases in holy attack matter, and int and your level are the main determinants for your heal. However, your total int added with your level needs to be in increments of 10 to increase your heal. Here's the formula for heal. This part depends on your heal's level, and this rounded means that the formula in there needs to end in a zero to have effect. I'll prove it to you. Taking off some of my equipment, my current int is at 99 plus 110. Add 95 to that from my level and it's a total of 304. Obviously not a rounded multiple of 10. And it heals for 8232. Chuck in my Eye of Dullahan that adds 5 int. You'd think it will up my heal but it doesn't because that's only going to be a total of 304 plus 5 which is 309. Unless of course you add in another extra int which I will be getting from my Frost Rosa rounding it up to 310 and now my heal's back up to 8612. Moving on to skills, I'll just skim through because it's pretty straightforward. Meditasha at level 10 for a 20% healing increase, Blessing at 15 for that plus 25 to end, and Heal at level 20 to increase the formula modifier after breakthrough. Honestly, a level 20 Kyria license is much better than a level 20 heal to get at first, but I didn't care. I just wanted to see big heals. Next up is runes. To up your heal, snag healing power runes and percentage increases to holy attack runes. The healing power runes are kinda scattered everywhere, but there's a total of 5 that you can get, giving a total of 10% at 2% increase to healing each. And also 5 holy attack runes, 3 1% ones and 2 2% ones, so a total of 7% increase in holy attack. However, one of the 2% holy attack runes it's really hard to get and you wouldn't go down that path unless you're specializing in Magnus Exorcimus. You're gonna have to blow about 90 gold medals to get there and a few 20,000s of contributions if not more. So unless you got a little bit of extra, I wouldn't suggest you get that last one and just focus on the other four. If you don't have enough gold medals, worry not because there's this other surefire way to up your heal. First aid. It's not mentioned anywhere and I haven't actually figured out how the increase formula works, but with every level of first aid you get, there's around a 1-2% to 2 increase to your heal amount. There are 3 levels of first aid that you can get in total from your favorite adventure guy NPC, with level 3 being unlocked at around adventure level C or D, I forgot. Oh, and also a quick shout out to petites that are priests' best friends. Get your petites healing effect up and super vigor skill maxed out as much as possible so you can rack up an additional 5% heal from your beloved Toothless on top of less SP consumption. Also, if you have a Knight Ira that's an extra and you're not using it, these petites look damn great in them. Now let's get nitty gritty with our adventure book. You can deposit and unlock a few things in your handbook to get additional int and percentage increases to holy attack. A single point of int can really help if you're that close to rounding up your heal formula. For cards, you can start by depositing a familiar card, which gives you int plus one. It's actually funny how the cards function and deposit benefit is almost the same, but hey, it's a cheap card, it's awesome. After that, you could go for a Bathory card that adds plus 1% holy attack. A little bit more expensive, but it's sure to up your heal. A warm tail card also adds an int plus 1, although a little bit more expensive, and you could use it for your slotted earring instead, but hey, if you got an extra, why not? 
Now we're going into exclusively rich people territory, right? We got the Sealed Lady White Snake card, which adds int plus one at deposit. If you really don't know what to do with that extra one that you made, or a Clock Tower Manager card that's for uh, max HP plus 70 and int plus one at deposit. If you're that bloody rich, or even better, an Angeling card plus five percent holy attack. Deposit that if you're willing to go up against the auction house millionaires. For headgears, you could go for the Pisces Diadem over at the Zodiac shop, which go for around 80 Zodiac tokens or whatever they're called. Quite an effort for a plus one int at deposit to be honest, because you gotta bring a date for 80 days. Alternatively though, you could go for a little tree hat. That is much easier. You just gotta do a little quest and that's plus one at craft. For me at level 95, I was just missing two points of int to get my formula rounded. So I crafted the little tree hat that requires a relatively quick quest for the blueprint and bought a familiar card because I ain't that rich, man. Oh, but definitely Bathory card is a must. Remember that percentage holy attack increases your heal regardless of int and level. Now here's where y'all are gonna judge me. <laughs> Equipments. Believe it or not, I don't even farm MVPs that much and it didn't cost me too much or too long to get my plus 10s. It just required persistence, patience, praying day and night to the RNG gods and knowing when to cut loss. I also didn't gacha as much as most of you will think. I kind of got lucky. Don't worry though, I'll be providing alternate solutions to equipments for free players. Here's what I got. I use a tiara for that plus 3 int and the slot that I need for my sealed lady white snake card which increases my healing by 10% and also ups my SP cost by 20%. I often chuck in a Marduk card in there in case I need some silence proof too. Or alternatively, you could also go for a crown instead, which is pretty much the same but looks better, in my opinion at least. Or ideally a fox earbell which has the same stats but also with a plus 5% HP increase. Unfortunately, that can only be unlocked at level 99. To make up for the increased SP cost from my Snake Lady card, I use a Life Magic Book on my offhand that's an upgrade from a memory book that you can craft at Geffen's Crafting Guy. I sometimes also switch it out with a Static Magic Shield to survive better against magic using bosses like Time Holders or Baphomets. On the note of survivability, I got a staunch cape which I will slot and put in a starred willow card for a kick of magic defense and starred shoes with a ferris card. You can opt to go with an Egira card for shoes if you need plus 2 int or additional mana regen but I sold mine because the HP boost really helped from the ferris card. I think what a lot of people forget is that you need to have significantly more HP than you heal to tank damage and also survive the whole battle to be useful. At 26.7k health and with these two babies, I can survive most ET bosses and MVPs. You'll definitely need much more HP though if you're looking to PvP. Next up is an essential combo that ideally every priest should have. At max upgrades, a holy robe and a crochet staff gives you a 5% increase to heals and also an additional 10% if your holy robe is plus 10 and then another 40% if your crochet is plus 10 at 4% per refine level. In my crochet staff, I have a meta ant card and I plan to slot it again to chuck in another one for a 10% boost to HP. For my holy robe, I generally always have an Argyopi card in there for an easy 25% reduction against most elements, but also have a swordfish card handy to survive meteor storms and a sandman card to beat up owl dukes. Gacha item here. Guardian of the Light is a great item for the face that adds 4% to healing potential, but alternatively you could also go for a Dragon Scale Stripe that drops from mutant dragons. Expensive, but it's a good plus 10 to dex and plus 5 to int, and also looks cool to boot. Or you know, elven ears work too if you want to look like your old character back in classic RO days. Gacha item again, a frost rosa adds plus one to all attributes. It's actually a meh item and can be easily replaced with a chocolate donut that you can craft also in Geffen. And another gacha item, but 
one that I didn't actually expect to get. These wings don't actually give you bonus to healing, but it does have a chance to double your heal, which is amazing, though inconsistent. The boost really does help though, especially in critical conditions, and the wings are definitely aesthetically pleasing. I initially didn't want this item because there's this amazing gold Christmas bell for a back item that adds 8% to your heals and looks majestic AF. The gacha item that I really wanted during the Archangel period, and still do, mind you, is this darned angel that is so bloody hard to get. It's probably the best tail for healing right now as it not only adds int, but also to holy attack. I really want it, it's the only reason why my tail is still empty now, cause I'm still banking on getting it. I hope the RNG gods listen to my plea, or... You know, you could go for a petite tail or something. It really doesn't matter because there's really nothing as good as that angel on the market. For accessories, I initially planned to get two int earrings and slot them with Wormtail cards, which adds plus four int each. But then that plan changed when I got my crochet stuff to plus 10. I swapped one out for an Eye of Dullahan, or as I like to call it, Eye of Dully, for that sweet, sweet bonus. I accidentally snapped an unbroken one. You should just go for broken ones if you can, since refines on them don't matter on your heels anyway, and they're much cheaper. Though, they're hard to get. Okay, now I can wear my gacha stuff without having you guys feel that big heels can only be achieved through cash. Shall we talk about enchantments now? These are the slots you can enchant with up to 5% healing increase through advanced enchantment. And I've gotten almost everything enchanted with it already, except for my tiara because I'm waiting for fox bell earrings and my wings got too good of an enchant to throw away. My tail? Obviously because I still want my angel and I'm pretty salty about it. Don't be like me, okay? You could get a petite tail or maybe that tail from the guild, the blue one that's shiny and stuff, and you can enchant it. Ideally, you'd want to settle for at least a 4% healing increase on every equipment. Stock up on friendship points for Mora coins, and what I usually do is buy a set amount of oracle dusts and crystals weekly from the NPC to gamble my headgear back and tail enchants. Or you could also do the oracle dungeon. Don't forget that enchants are late game enhancements, so you shouldn't worry too much about them until later on. And that's pretty much it guys. To wrap it up, here are my total stats that increase healing. And here are all the stuff I mentioned, categorized into gambles and non-gambles. I usually go for non-gamble enhancements first as I level through the game and then gamble for late game or just for fun if I have extra money. Hope that sums it up and it can help you guys out. On the right people, my heals can hit for 13,013 with 26,026 crits, depending on their percentage healing received modifiers. If you have any further recommendations or tips for big fat heals, be sure to share it in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have a good one, peeps.